This is JP De Raw, show number 163, recorded on February 2nd, 2016. Tonight's guest is a very special guest, someone we've really wanted to have on the show for a long time, but she doesn't do very many interview, interviews. This may be actually one of her first, if, if not her first. Tonight's guest is Meg Bitten, who's an incredibly popular photographer. Uh, you've seen her photos on Facebook, I'm sure. We'll be streaming through them here as we have this discussion with her tonight over the next hour. Um, but if you're new to J.P. DeRaw, we are a weekly photography podcast. You can get the recorded version on Stitcher, Spreaker, iTunes, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, Podomatic, Podbean, and soon Google Play Music. All those are places where you can get the audio version. The video version you can get on iTunes and YouTube and Vimeo. Um, be sure to subscribe. And we'd love to have you come out and join us in one of our um, groups on Facebook. Just search J.P. DeRaw on Facebook. All right, Meg, how are you doing tonight? Everything is going great. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> well, thank you, Meg. Um, what I to start off with is I'm sure what every interview starts off with is, you know, how did you get into photography? How, what, what brought you to photography? I have never not been a photographer as long as I can possibly remember. I think that children's photography started for me much like it did for um a lot of photographers when I had my first child who was going to be 15. So we lived in a small community and I, I mean, I was a photographer on the yearbook staff in high school and I photographed through college and after that, and then my daughter became my main focus and I met other people and they started asking me to take pictures of their children. And it sort of grew like that. Yeah. I think that happens to a lot of us that we start off with our kids and grow from there. You know, you hear so often moms with a camera, you know, dads with a camera too. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's where a lot of us get started. And I, I've said this before, but I look back at like my high school photos and my kid photos and the photos that were taken back then were all, you know, it didn't really matter who you hired. They all looked the same. Mm -hmm. All were you standing in, some, in front of some fake tree or whatever the little background was they all had. Um, <laughs> and I, I truly believe that those moms and dads with cameras uh, that have developed into the, the creative atmosphere that we have today that has really taken us to another level. I agree. And, and, you, and of course, you know, you are a big part of that. Um, when did you know that photography would be more than just taking photos of your kids and would be, you know, something you could actually earn a living with? I mean, I think as far back as when I had a camera, even when I was younger, I always said to myself, one day I'm going to be a photographer. I don't necessarily know that it was one day I'm going to be a children's photographer. And I don't even know that I'm always going to be a children's photographer. Um, I think that when I was younger, I enjoyed more taking landscape pictures. And I think when I started to take photographs of people is really when I knew that I wanted to make a career out of people pictures. Right. Um, yeah, and, and you know, what you're ever doing today doesn't mean you have to do it forever. That's that's for sure. Right. Um, okay, so let's get a couple other easy things out of the way that I know <laughs> that you're eventually going to ask in chat. And chat, if you're, you know, people out in chat, if you're wanting to ask a mega question, you know, put it into chat. I'll work it into the conversation as we go along um, if I can. If it rolls off the screen, you may have to put it again because I don't want to interrupt the flow. But if I miss it, put it back, back out there again. All right. So standard questions I know people will want to ask is raw versus JPEG. Would, do, you, do you use both, either? Which one? Raw. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, and oh, by the way, our name for our new people, JPEG to raw, is not about converting a JPEG to raw. Uh, you can go to our about page and find out more about that. Nikon or Canon? Nikon. Ah, again, Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so this is this is one uh, that, that I know somebody will ask eventually, so let's get it out of the way, is do you have a favorite lens that you like to shoot for portrait photography? I, I do. I Well, lately I've really been enjoying the 200 F2 lens. Wow. And that's what I've been – that's what I've been using for a long time for portraits. It's not necessarily people ask me what my favorite lens is and I have favorite lenses for all different purposes, but for my portrait work, that's what I've been liking. Now the two, that's a heavy lens, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's a it gorgeous is. lens. 
It is. If you've ever, if you, you know, I know you use it, but if you have never seen it, it is a gorgeous lens. Um, do, you, do you like the distance it gives you from the, the subject? Or maybe uh, some of that, what they call compression or something like that, or just the distance it allows you with the lens? I think that I connect better in my own personal space. Um, you won't ever really find me being close up to my subject. I think that the compression that it gives is an added bonus, but that's not why I started or have always really used long focal lengths. I am more of an observer mm -hmm. and not so much an interactor. So it okay. works better for me. Yeah. And I think I've also saw you use like the 135 DC. Is that right? I do. I do. And that one takes some skill to use because of what I don't, I've never used it, but I've read about it that that DC stands for defocus. De or something. Yeah, something Control. like that. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know what you're doing, it could be a, a tough one to get right. It is a really nice lens. It's a beautiful lens. I Before I had the 200, that was my go to lens. Yeah, that's what I, the people who understand it and use it well really get some good results from it. But it is one. It is one that uh, takes some skill to master. Okay, it's a little finicky. <laughs> the next one: Photoshop or Lightroom, or both, <laughs> or neither. Uh, both, but more Photoshop. Okay. Um, let's see: Actions or presets, or none. None, neither. Okay, PC or Mac? Mac. Ah, oh, you got almost everything right up until then. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. <laughs> uh, okay. And, uh, you know, um, those are just some of the questions I know people are going to ask. So hopefully we got those out of the way for you. Um, and so that y'all will have those. If you come in late, we'll do, we do record this so you can get it later. All right, Meg, um, you are a, an extremely popular person out on Facebook and, and all over the place. And I was looking back at, you know, going all the way back, I think, 2010, is where I, your first photos I could see that were posted on on Facebook, mm -hmm. and it's it's really nice to watch the trend, the how things have grown over the years from those photos that you took back then to the photos that are today. Um, do you have you received any formal training, uh, any Photoshop or, or photography training to that has helped you improve like that? I have not. I have wow. not taken a class, a workshop, or videos or anything, everything that I do, I've taught myself over time. That is incredible. So you just, you just play and figure it out? Yes. Photoshop, for yeah. me, Photoshop is so confusing and so many options that it's just so difficult. Now, Gina Perry, so this some people ask a question, so I'm going to try and work them in here. Gina Perry asks, do you still make mistakes? Every day. <laughs> Of course. You, for uh, some of us who sit on the outside, you, you see these gorgeous photos and think everything you do is just fantastic. Absolutely not. Nope. I still make mistakes. And from those mistakes, I learn things. And I always hope other people continue to make mistakes. I, that, you know, the only, way to, the only way to advance is to make mistakes. So... I just like to correct my mistakes and figure out how to correct them on my own. Right. And, and does that mean you're, some, you're somewhat self-critical of your own images? I am. Okay. How do you, you know, a lot, some people, especially if you're taking pictures of your kids, they get so emotionally attached to the, the person in the image, the kid in the image. You know, like my own kid, you might be able to see him a little bit mm -hmm. back there, that's my younger woman who was younger. It's hard to be self-critical of your own child's photos. And if you're just starting out, that could be what you're shooting a whole lot of, of your own children. Mm -hmm. Any advice on how to be self-critical of your own work? To, I mean, I think it's important to separate your emotions from your images of your children, or else you're not really going to advance. And I think really the best way is to have a trusted mentor and ask for feedback. I think it's important. And I always say, take, take criticism from where it comes. So it's important to find somebody who you trust. Yeah. Someone who's got your best interest in mind and not just being critical of your work to be critical. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That is, I've heard that a number of times from successful people that to find somebody you can trust with their critique. Mm -hmm. So, um, what, 
you know, what uh, is it about photography that keeps you going? How, how do you keep excited about these things? You know, you are, to me, if I reached your level, I'd be done. There's, well, <laughs> there's no they, more going they, for me. What keeps you, know, you excited? There, there's, there's so much more to be had. And I think that things are changing for me. My, my children are bigger. I don't have babies and toddlers anymore. So I'm moving. I don't want to say I'm moving away from children's photography because I love it, but I, there's definitely more to be had and different explorations and different subjects to come. So there's a whole world out there to explore. Yeah. Um, and there's some technical questions being asked, asked out in chat and what I would say with some of those, cause I got some of those on our Facebook page too, is, um, you know, this is not a, like a how to video we're doing. We're not going to go over like individual, um, edits on, on photos. Meg does offer, I think you offer a $200 a year or just this first year you did this, the so $200 for 12 editing sessions. Uh, the first part of each month. Is that right? I do. I offer, I offer a ton of different, uh, classes and workshops, for all different yep. kinds of budgets and all different kinds of purposes. So, and, and let me ask you, in any of those, do you go over like, uh, how to post it on Facebook, you know, to get the best resolution? Cause that people seem to, to struggle with that a lot is my photo looked great on my computer. I uploaded to Facebook. It didn't look good. Is that right. part of um, any, something you do too? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I okay. also, you know, I have, I haven't, I haven't hacked Photoshop. Fo I haven't hacked, uh, Facebook for Photoshop myself. I mean, I posted something the other day that looked terrible. So, so I, I, maybe it's the hour you post. I don't know. I, I don't write the algorithm. So, but well, I try, <laughs> I mean, I try to have. We all know that Facebook does do some compression. If, if you don't post it just right. And maybe even if you do, Facebook does do some compression of your photo further and some further editing of your photo. So it's probably yes. never going to look good as good as it did on your computer. No. Okay. But it's, I think it's most important how your image looks when it's printed, not how it looks on Facebook. Right. That's a good point. Yes. Because that's what the client is going to be getting. Right. Right. And ultimately at the end of the day, that's what you want to look at on your walls. So that's more the goal than how it looks on Facebook or should be, I think. All right. I got, a, I got another question. This is yeah. uh, the photo came up a while back, but you do a lot of maternity sessions and some of the maternity sessions are somewhat revealing, and they're mm -hmm. in public. Mm -hmm. Are you really in public, or is that uh, background that's added in later on? Oh, anything, a any place you ever see me in any picture is where I am. Okay. Okay. So how do you do that? How do you, do you stop traffic? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a crosswalk in New York, so you have enough time, you know, I mean, we cross the streets in the city. So, so if you walk into the middle of the street and you stand there for five seconds and I shoot and then turn back off. and walk to the other side, it's all very controlled and simple yeah. and yeah. Do you get nervous doing that? Cause I, I, no. you know, me being an introverted person, I'd be afraid everybody was staring at me and wondering what is no. this, this fool doing? I mean, I, I grew up in New York City. I was born and raised there, so okay. it's really where I'm most comfortable. And um, no, you know, people see a lot crazier things in the city than somebody taking pictures. So nobody really pays attention. Okay, but but you have to. If you're only going to be out there for a little bit, you got to be ready, right? Mm -hmm. You got to get your model out there, take your shot, or your yep. client out there, take your shot, and move on. Mm -hmm. And and you can't be fiddling around with your settings and getting everything just right for twenty minutes. No, 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 <laughs> no. I have like 10 seconds. Okay. Wow. Right. That... So, yeah. So we go over it. We go over the posing and all of that on the sidewalk okay. before. So everybody sort of knows what they're doing. And I wait half a city block up and we all go at it at the same time. And I sit down or lie down on the double yellow line and shoot for five seconds. And that's it. Oh my. So you're lying down on the road? Mm -hmm. Do you have an assistant or something that's like watching out for you to make sure? Uh, well, no. Uh, yes, I have an assistant. I keep her with the client to watch out for them, not with me. I'm fine. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that would, that would, I don't know if I'd have the guts to do that. <laughs> <laughs> now, I imagine you're also not bringing any lights with you. That, a shot like that, you're going to be doing all natural light, right? No, that's all natural light. Okay. Um, 
how much you, you most of the photos I see look like they're out in the field. But mm-hmm. are you also do you also do studio work? I do do studio work. I have a studio. Okay. And in the studio, imagine you cuz I think I saw somewhere you're going to be doing a lighting workshop or something like that coming up. I just finished one this past weekend. Oh, okay. I did one. I'll okay. be doing another one. All right. So you um what is your thoughts on a photographer who's just getting started and where they should be looking as you know, they may be saying I'm a natural light photographer. Should they be looking at adding um artificial light to their to what they do? I just think it's important for in any profession that you're in, photography included, to be well rounded in your field. So whether or not you're gonna use lights, it's good to know how to use them. Okay. All right. A question from chat. And some of these names are too small. I can't. I, Jennifer, I think it's uh, asks, uh, your logo photo with the girl. I think it's the girl holding the flowers. Mm-hmm. She asks, um, why is this your logo picture? And can you tell us about it? Why is it my logo picture? Um, I, I don't know. It, it's my daughter and it's from okay. many, many years ago. And I think it's one of my all time favorite pictures. I have it hanging huge in my home and it just makes sense to me. And, you know, that's the thing that's, that you don't always know is that a photo could have a personal connection to you that isn't obvious to other people, especially mm-hmm. when it involves our own kids. Right. Um, okay. What, uh, where, where am I at here? Okay, with you know, when I was reading, you posted something on your Facebook page the other day, uh, some positive feedback, and I imagine you get positive feedback all the time from people. I do I get great feedback? So at some point, it seems, and it doesn't seem to have done this to you, but it seems just to me that if you to continue as positive feedback, you get somewhat numb to that um, at some point. But it doesn't seem to have happened to you. How do you? How does that continue to? Not, how does it, how do you not become numb to it? I guess is what I'm saying. Um, I'm not numb to any of that feedback. I'm not numb to the positive feedback and I'm not numb to the negative feedback at all. I, I, I mean, I, I never, I, I, I never expected this for me. I never, I don't really even know what this is, but, um, no, I can't believe it when I get that positive feedback and I can't believe it when I get emails from people saying that I've changed their life. I can't, I can't believe it. Uh, it, it must be wonderful. I've read it several people's blogs where they've talked about the going to the workshop and how it changed their lives and, you know, really came in a great time for them. Cause I think if you're just getting started in photography, you need something to help push you and keep you going. And you mentioned negative feedback. No one as popular as you can get away with not having negative feedback too. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I don't know, maybe you've, it still hurts, but you've been able to handle it and deal with it. Any advice for someone who's just getting started, who doesn't have the skill, hasn't achieved the skills that you've achieved so far, how they could handle and deal with that negative feedback. Um, I think they're, uh, well, I, I think, I think recognizing what actual negative feedback is, is important. Um, If somebody critiques my work and has a valid point and it might appear negative, it's really not negative. It's positive because it makes me think and it makes me grow. Um, Negative for me is, you know, personal attacks on me. And uh, maybe I am a little numb to that now. (laughs) That's probably a good thing. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> because I think when you first start getting them, you know, heck, let's say you start your first Facebook Facebook page, you're almost a hundred likes. And then all of a sudden three people unlike your page. That hurts. You know, oh. and, <laughs> so even the little things like that, but, it, but something even more personal where they, they critique and, and are critical of your photo that or your technique or something else. Like you said, maybe even to the personal level for someone just getting started, that could be a challenge. And it, it for some people, it's going to make them and make them stronger. For other people, it may break them. Right. I always say just uh, take it from where it comes. It's very important to recognize just because somebody says something doesn't make it true. Yeah. Okay. And it may be also good, going back to what you said earlier, to have a trusted person that can help you critique and they can run those negative comments by. Mm-hmm. 
Um, okay, out in chat, guest number six seventy, and you can you can leave your name as guest six seventy, or you can change it with an alias if you want. Ask a question. Do you have a favorite print lab? I use Artsy Couture. Okay. And I'm lucky enough that they do sponsor me, and I and people say to me, "Do you you actually use them?" Yes, I actually use them for everything. So. I can I can say with a surety that I'm very pleased with both their customer service and their printing. And what was that place again? Artsy Couture. Okay. All right. Next one is um, Meg. Do you prefer a special time of day to shoot? Um, I, I mean the the golden hour light is beautiful for sure. It's soft. It's low. Mm-hmm. Uh, I. But I, I I can shoot at any time of the day, and all of that can be, you know, very exciting depending on the location and the setting. I, and that brings us to another question: Is how do you find these locations? Because some of the locations, you know, I probably would walk right past them and not see what you see. And you know, I'm looking at the one that we have up now, the the photo of the girl with uh, with the traffic in the background. I would have never picked that spot. I would have just walked right by it. But you somehow you're seeing the beauty in the spot and and bringing it out. How right? Like the picture right now is in Target. That yeah, one. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, you get in trouble. Yeah. For all I don't know. Balloons? I don't really do any location scouting. People ask me questions about location scouting all the time, yeah. and I don't do any. I always say it's more about the light than it is the location. So, and it's a lot about color for me also. So that's really how I jump out of the car and decide oh, where color. So like the shot we have now, maybe it, or mm-hmm. now it's passed, but the one before that mm-hmm. would look like maybe at a fair or something. Yes, okay. carnival. Now, did you get in trouble for blowing all the balloon, the bubbles in Target? No, I actually didn't at all. <laughs> you no, ran, you ran out before they caught you. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. Um, now for for models, I know. You you talked earlier about having the lens where you're able to stand back a little bit more. Um, how much direction do you give the model, the uh, the adult model or the the child model, or are you just letting uh, the the action happen, giving them general directions, let the action happen, and and just wait? I I generally like to put them where I want them, so I I try to place them, and then I back up, and especially with children, if you just wait a couple of minutes, the best images come from what they do naturally. So I spend a lot of time waiting. Okay. All right. Um, how much time do you spend on the, on the back end, on the editing process? How much of the shot do you have is the, the concept, the photo up front versus the editing on the back end? Um, I think it depends on the picture. I mean, my edits are pretty streamlined right now. I think my vision is pretty consistent. So I can edit quickly. I think that the longest or the most time is spent actually thinking about what I want it to look not look like, not actually making it what I want it to look like. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. They all seem to have great hair, which somebody pointed out in and chat. Do you do you do that? Does a parent do that? Does do you have a hairstylist? Um, I I well for my adult uh, for adults like the one you're seeing, I recommend a hairstylist. But um, no, I just clean washed hair. Okay. Now you do you know workshops throughout the year, throughout the country, actually, mm-hmm. not just there in and your part of the the country. You you travel throughout the country doing workshops too. Who who would you say is a perfect person to, to come to your workshop? Or is it really anybody? Um, I think I think anybody can come to a workshop. I've had people come to a workshop without a camera before. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So I think that all different people come for all different reasons and they take away all different reasons. Okay. Mm-hmm. Do you have uh, many men come to them? I have more women than men, but I do have men. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and how many workshops typically in a year do you do? Uh, for 2016, I'm trying to do 
I'm trying to stay home every other month. So I'll travel about six times this year and then I'll do some little things here and there in my studio. Okay. Melissa asked, um, any locations you haven't shot yet, uh, either a workshop or, or just regular shooting, any sh- locations you haven't shot that yet that really is on your list that, Hey, I'd like to someday do a workshop or go here and do th- do that. Um, I don't, I don't really have a, a list. I don't. I'm just sort of going to take it as it comes. Okay. Um, so you asked the question about the men. Now, you know, you do give a lot of information, both with people who take your, your um, the monthly thing. Um, I don't, what are you calling that? I forgot the name. Oh, uh, webinar. Yeah, the webinar. That and your your you know uh, workshops and all these other things. You're giving out a lot of good information. Do you ever worry about people who may be coming to take the class just to get the information to go back and resell it themselves? Sure. Is that a, a I mean, challenge? I don't, I don't. I don't. I don't worry. I don't worry about it. I think that I don't have any canned content, even for my online workshops. And I interact individually with every person. So all of my interactions are different. And I always say, anybody can, anybody can repeat and do as I do, but nobody can do as I'm going to do. Right. So I don't really worry. Yeah, I, th- I think in the end of the day, there can be only one Meg. There can be only one Mike. There can be only mm-hmm. one Meg. There can be only mm-hmm. one... Gina, who's out there in chat, no matter if you show us and walk us through, you know, step by step, this is not like an Excel spreadsheet where right. it's easily repeatable. Um, right. This is, you know, the creative side is something that we're all different and can't mm-hmm. be exactly duplicated. All right. Um, let's see. We had another question out there in chat. Well, somebody just said the girl in the balloon with a balloon is my all time favorite. Um, Thank you. You deal with going to that. We you deal with a lot of smaller children. How do you deal with the the small children who just won't behave? I I don't really have that problem. I think I, what I always say is I don't at any point give any kind of indication that I'm a playmate. You know, you'll never find me running around a tree or squeaking a squeaker. Mm-hmm. And I think that I think that connection from the beginning makes it so. They know, you know, that this is a job and we're going to do it. And they, they pretty much behave harder, a little bit harder in the studio where it's a smaller space. Okay. But outside, kids are intrigued by nature. So, yeah. Uh, they also, somebody in chat also says that you, you are able to get perfect focus. It seems you get perfect focus. Uh, are you focusing on the model's eyes? Or is that the magic of the of the two hundred? I imagine two hundred f two also creates a very shallow depth of field, so you got to be careful. Yeah, with that. it does. Um, I, I I do focus on the eyes. Not not every image is super sharp. Uh, you know, like <laughs> like we go back to the beginning. I make mistakes too. Sure. Um, and I think that's just practice. Okay. Uh, and this is a good question. This is I was going to ask this too. So, you know, looking at, I don't know if you ever do this. Go back to Facebook and go all the way to the as far back as you can go, and then work your work your way forward. And you can definitely see that uh, a st- your style will be you know changing over the years. How do you um, stay true to your style, but also stay creative and interested? Not, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um... And not feel like you're doing the same thing over and over again. I think as what as what is in front of me is changing, my children getting bigger, the scope of my business changing, that what's interesting to me is changing also. And my vision and my perception and the angles that I see stay the same, but my subject matter is changing and that's what keeps me going. Okay. Um, outside of all the work that I'm sure keeps you crazy busy in the family, uh, any personal projects that you, you're doing just for you, uh, photography wise? I am. I'm working on a book currently. Ah, mm-hmm. 
Okay, that's it, you uh, imagine will be posted on on Facebook or or your site whenever it's ready. I certainly will. <laughs> we'll be looking out for that. Um, I'm not sure what somebody just posted there. All right, so someone who's saying I've been working, I've been working, and I cannot get the meg quality. What would you? What advice would you give to them? Just keep working. Just keep working. I, you know the. The rate at which people excel now in digital photography is astonishing. So I see people doing amazing work that just picked up a camera a year ago. Mm-hmm. But I always say, I've been doing this for, I've been, I mean, I've been, I've been in business for almost 15 years alone, and I was doing photography before that. So it's a long time. Yeah. That's an incredibly important point that mm-hmm. you you should not compare yourself at year two to Meg at year 15 or no. whatever, that, you know, it takes some time to, to get that. And you've put in the hours. I'm sure if you added up the hours, there's a lot of hours there. Yeah. From, and I think it's also getting to know yourself better also. And I know myself differently at 43 than I did at 27. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, That time just cannot be replaced. I mean, you have to you have to spend the time to get there. Mm -hmm. And I think you know if you're a photographer who's in year two, year three, and you're 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 wanting to give up because you just can't do that, give yourself some more time. Keep keep at it. Keep working. Um, You'll get better. And I think that may be a great time to take a workshop. You know, whether you take Meg's or somebody else's. There's we spend so much money on on camera bodies and camera lenses on software on hardware PCs all this kind of stuff. The continual education is an important thing too. I think for a lot of people, maybe not you know Meg yourself taught, but that's kind of we can't all do that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and 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 any kind of workshop, not necessarily a photography workshop. You know, a getting to know yourself workshop that makes a huge difference in your work also. Yeah. Um, how much, of, you know, I know you do a lot of editing. We talked about that. You like, you mm-hmm. like Photoshop. How important to you is getting it, you know, right in camera before you do start the editing? Of the utmost importance. You know, I, I, the edit is a more beautiful version of reality to me, but that reality has to be there. Right. The, the, the shot we just had up, now we have your daughter, but the one before that, you had that nice creamy background. Mm-hmm. A lot of that, you didn't add that so much in post, right? You, a lot of that is the no, lens you're that's using. that's the 200. That, yeah. that, I mean, that is the compression of the 200 out of the camera. Yeah. And, you know, there's some other lenses for people who don't want to spend the money yet on a 200. You know, something like the one you mentioned, the 135 DC, mm-hmm. that's much cheaper. An 85 one four. You know, there's there's other options out there. Maybe not with that same 200 millimeter length. Right. Uh, I think it's also important that people want to shoot at that kind of a distance. It's not it's not for everybody. Mm-hmm. And I'm in awe of I, I'm really in awe of people who do amazing wide angle work. I'm a terrible wide angle shooter, and I think the wide angle work is incredible, but it's just not for me. Right, you got to find what works for you. All right, so looking back, uh, you say you still make mistakes today, but uh, looking back throughout your photography career, maybe more so the business side of it, anything if you had to go back over and do it again that you would do different? Um, I would let less noise into my head from things that don't matter. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I... What do, what do you struggle with the most today with running the business? Oh, um, I, I, have a, I have an amazing team of people now. And that was put into place when it all just became too big for me. I still do all my own shooting. Well, I actually have a newborn photographer who does all the newborns. But I do all my own editing and all my own shooting. But pretty much everything else is now handled by other people. Um, so I don't have a lot of struggles right now. Uh, I, I, yeah. 
some people who are as a cre- as creative as you are and and talented on the photography side sometimes struggle on the business side. Did you find any trouble with the business side of running a photography Abs- business? Absolutely. I mean, I I never wanted to sit down and do paperwork or accounting or <laughs> anything like that. I mean, that's a nightmare. Yeah. Um, and um, and imagine today you have someone that helps you with that. I do. I, like I said, I have a great team of people in place. Everybody has their own specific thing that they do and it makes my life a lot easier and has enabled me to refocus a little bit on my family, which was important. Right. I I think that's important to find where your skills are. And, you know, once you can afford it, you focus on what makes you money with your skills and get Mm -hmm. somebody else to help you with the other parts. Okay. uh, A couple of questions from chat. Um, Typical work day. How long is your typical work day? Uh, I I, I really, I I wish I could say that I have set hours for my work day, but I really, I don't. Uh, I work pretty much all day and all night other than blocks of time that I've allotted for my family. Mm Mm-hmm. And what keeps driving you to do this in a, the day to day? You know, I go to work and sit at a desk because I kind of have to mm-hmm. <laughs> to bring home money for the for the family. What what drives you to keep going? I just I I like to function at a fast pace. I like to discover new things. I like my brain to always be working. So that's what keeps me moving forward. Okay. Um, any favorite photography app, phone app, I imagine, is what they're asking. What do you mean? Like, do you have a, uh, I have one that tells me what the golden hour is and some different items oh. like that for my, for my I don't phone. Know. I have, like the camera on my iPhone. No, I don't have any apps. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I'm showing my age, I guess. <laughs> I'm older than you. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So. Next one is from, this is from, I can't read the name. Um, how, do, how do you think and plan your shots? I know you said you don't scout sites, but, y- you I know. Don't, I don't think or plan anything. I don't think or plan anything unless it's something I'm actually planning for myself. Okay. But generally speaking, I do not think or plan anything. I mean, I travel a lot and I travel to a lot of places that I've never even seen before. So it's really hard to plan. Yeah. So I just go with it. So wait a second. So you just go to a location and you're able to find these gorgeous spots just on a whim. Yeah. See that you, you make us sick with that. (laughs) There's nothing, there's nothing I can do if I fly in somewhere and I I get there the night before at night and I have to shoot the next day and it's someplace that I've never been before. I just have to go. All right, if you're ever in Swanee, you've got to walk around with me or drive around with me and, and show me the thousands of beautiful locations I've been driving by all, every day. I mean, you never know what the I, I little stink. patch of flowers in front of the supermarket could look like at the right angle, you know? It's... Any, any tips you can give me or anybody else for finding these? You know, what, what stops you and, and helps you find Light. these locations? Light. Light and color. That's what stops me. Okay. Um, so I, and imagine the best, like you said, the best light is golden hour morning or, or evening golden hour to find those locations like that. Um, yeah, I, or even light, you know, it could be any time of the day, but the evenness of the light, you know, not creating those bright splashes along the ground or not creating dappled light on their faces. So even light, you know, yeah. I don't really like to search for shade though. I like to be more out in the open. Yeah, I love the this one at the fair. I, I mean, the trouble was when I went on your site, Meg. We talked about getting me getting some photos on there. Um, it was, I don't know if, how I could cut any of them out. They're all just so gorgeous. Oh, thank That's what you. makes it so difficult. I I don't know how many I got here, and we're showing, we're rotating through them, but there's just so many of them. And of course, there's a whole bunch more on your Facebook page. And if you're watching this live or recorded what we're streaming is of course compressed for the internet and all that kind of stuff. I highly suggest you go to Meg's page, Facebook page or her, her website. Uh, we'll have all the links if you don't know them already. I have a Flickr page also, and I know oh. that nobody uses Flickr anymore, okay. but I keep it updated because it goes back so far. So 
Well, we'll have to check that out. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so I just wanted to tell everybody, you know, you've probably already seen a lot of her photos, but if you're watching this recorded or, or live, you're not getting the full effect of what her photos are. Um, all right. Uh, questions are really flowing now, so I've missed a bunch of them. We've answered the one about the traffic. Um, oh, here, here's one. So I, I know you're somewhat like me and that you're introverted, I think. How, how did you come to saying, all right, I can do these, the workshops, I can do the, the men, not, I don't know if you do mentoring, but the, the editing shots where, you know, you know, people are listening. They can't, they're not interacting necessarily, but you, you know, you're out there. How did you overcome that, that gap? Or was it always easy for you? Well, I don't know that I've overcome the gap really, because I get so many requests for speaking and conferences and I pretty much turn them all down. So I think what it is, is that I really exist in a place that's comfortable for me. And it's small groups usually, you know, they're not big. Mm -hmm. So as long as I'm comfortable, I'm okay. And I always, always have my assistant with me, which is very helpful. Yeah, and do you mind saying her name or his name? Oh, Nikki. Nikki. Okay. My amazing assistant, Nikki. Awesome. Um, all right. There's a lot of, if I've missed your, your question out in chat, you may have to post it again because they're starting to flow off, but we're coming up on the end of the hour and, and I was looking for your, I was looking for your Flickr thing. I may have to just do this later. Oh no, I think I just found it. Do you want me to show this? You can. Uh, never mind. I don't know if I have the right thing. So we'll, okay. we'll just, <laughs> we'll do that offline. Um, I think Sarah Cornish is out there in chat right now. Hey, Sarah. <laughs> All right. So, and Sarah is a, a favorite of ours. She's been on the show a few times. Thanks for coming out, uh, Sarah. I think I've got most of the listener questions. If not, you know, we talked to the first part about there were some editing questions. You, you, you do those when you do your, your editing every month. And, and if you do a, um, a workshop or something like that, yeah. um, what is up for, you know, what are you looking forward to? What's coming up for you that we should be looking out for? Anything? Hmm. Um, I have some exciting things in the works. The, the, the book. book that I'm working on, the book, which is really exciting. Um, I have some video stuff that I'm working on. So video. we'll see. That sounds interesting. Yeah. Um, okay. So the workshops, when's the next workshop? When is the next workshop? I could probably um, pull that up on your webpage and not have to The ask. next workshop is in Florida in March with Sandra Bianco. All right. All of that is stuff coming up. There's some webinars on there. There's some workshops. There's actual sessions, mini sessions. There's some online stuff. So there's a whole smattering right there. And the bottom, there is an amazing workshop coming up um, in July with Audrey Willard. And I'm super excited about that. Where's that one at? That will be in Chicago. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I was, I'm looking here on sh on shop soulsimagine.com and that's where you have them all listed right mm -hmm. okay so i'm sure by you go there we'll have it in the show notes too where you can go over and, and look at them um and if they're not sold out yet you know look at signing up for one of them they're coming to your town all right as far as uh, let me look at the traffic here or what people are saying props and outfits do you have a selection for your clients to, to use or do they bring their own? It depends on what the session is. I do specific mini sessions where I do supply beautiful dresses. Um, and I have a, an amazing seamstress. Her name is Anna and she's from Anna Triant Couture and she makes beautiful dresses. And then for my full client sessions, I have my clients purchase all of their own clothing, but we advise them. Okay. Uh, okay. Other than Sarah Cornish, who, what, what awesome photographers do you follow? Um, I, I, I follow, I think photographers way outside of my genre. Okay. Um, there's a photographer named Todd Hito who I love. Um, 
I love Sally Mann's work. Mm -hmm. I have a very old friend who is more in the commercial business and his name is Doug Friedman and he does amazing work also. So I tend not to follow so much my own genre of photography. Interesting. Okay. Here's a good question. And it was on my list. And if you ever see my show notes, if I ever showed you my show notes, Meg, they're not in a good order. They're all over the place. <laughs> and that's what keeps me confused because I write them as I think of them. Uh, and I need to find an order to put them in. But this is a great question. Um, oh, now I've lost it. Oh, here it is. What is your biggest piece of advice for a, a buddy, a, you know, new photographer, somebody just getting into this, just starting to find their style and, and, and work and building their business? Don't let anybody tell you what to do. Follow your own voice, follow your own vision, try out whatever you want to try, and don't let anybody tell you you can't. You can. Very good, very good. Oh, and uh, Sarah just said, "Aha! Uh -huh, now I feel special. <laughs> <laughs> you um, are special. <laughs> I, somebody asked about night shots. I did see that you. There were some out there. I don't. Um, I don't know if I can pull one out real quick, but you do do some. You mentioned doing, uh, you know, morning and evening or golden hour, but you also mm -hmm. do some in, in the evening too, right? Yeah, I, I I do shoot occasionally at night, not that often. Okay. Um. What. We answered that. We answered that. Sarah who? Sarah Cornish, as somebody asked. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Any any closing thoughts there? From, from me? No, um, I'm oh. sorry. For the chat room, anybody, any questions here before we move off? If I've missed your question, you're going to need to put it out there. While we're waiting on them, uh, let me just say a few things. We've got a, few, a lot of people out here that we don't know. Uh, and this is your first time too, Meg, for JPEG Raw. We do a mm -hmm. show most Thursday, most Tuesday nights on a lot of different topics. Next week we're talking about we're talking to a photographer who just got back from Antarctica, a five week trip down to Antarctica. Crazy. Uh, if you came in late, or or if you had to leave early, you won't hear this. But if you had came in late for Meg's show tonight, this the edited version of this will be out on YouTube, Stitcher, Spreaker, I tunes if i didn't say that already uh, iHeartRadio, radio tune in podomatic podbean and soon google play music um so there's lots of places you can get this from later on the video and audio will be available in all those different places yeah the best way to get it is to subscribe i will post it on our facebook page when it's when it's out and it's ready you if you want to subscribe this the page you're on now the jpeg there is a subscribe button up on the top somewhere um we also do some giveaways every once in a while. This month for February 2016, we're giving away Stacy Jensen over at Color Rail has uh, donated her photographer's planner's book. We're giving that away, and it's really easy to enter to win. All you got to do is go to jpegderaw.com, and then on the right-hand side, you'll see the subscribe to our newsletter, and just enter that, subscribe to our newsletter. And great news, you won't be spammed from us because you won't be receiving a whole bunch of emails from us because so far I haven't put out one newsletter. It's something we're going to do in the future to keep you informed of what we're doing. But so far I haven't done one, so you don't have to worry about being spam. But just enter to win by subscribing to our newsletter. We thank Stacy for donating that to us. Um, on the other side, if you, you know, we do gifts like we just did with the 2016, 2015 best of, uh, 2015 photo contest, and we give away prizes with that. We're able to do that by using our Amazon affiliate link. If you are shopping on Amazon, we would appreciate it if you use the JPEG to Raw link, which is really easy, jpeg to rawcom slash Amazon. And that is J-P-E-G, the number two, J-P-E-G, two, R-A-W, dot com slash Amazon. Use that before you go to Amazon and buy anything. It doesn't have to be photography related. It won't cost you anything extra. And the show gets a little bit of credit that we then give back to our to the people who listen to the show through various giveaways and contests. We also have a Topaz Labs affiliate. So if you're going to buy anything from Topaz Labs, uh, we'd appreciate if you use our link before you go there. Just use jpegraw.com slash Topaz Labs. 
All right. So this person is asking, do you edit, do you do anything to calibrate your, your, um, your monitor? I know you use a Mac, but they still might need to be monitored, you know, adjusted. I, oh, I have a, I have a color monkey. I have found that the most, most recent Retina Display Macs are pretty close, straight out of the box. Okay. Someone's asking, uh, oh, do you allow clients? And I, I see people struggle with this sometimes, and it may be more from the clients begging them. I don't know if you have to deal with this, but I know, especially people just getting started out, where clients want to see the unedited versions and then choose from those. Do you allow clients to see no. unedited photos? No, never. I present a gallery of 20 fully edited images, and that's it. Okay. And, at, you know, I would say, um, like, I do a lot of sports photography, and I don't let people see the unedited. You know, I, in sports photography, I'm, I'm good if I get 30 to, to 35% of good shots. Mm -hmm. They're never going to see the other 70%. No. Mm -mm. Um, top three. Let's see, do you... And the questions are going by so fast, I can't read them. <laughs> okay, so with that F2, so the, uh, I'll answer this one because I can see it real fast. With your, your 200 F2 lens, are you shooting at F2? I will shoot, yeah, I, I do. I shoot it mainly at F2, except when I can't shoot it at F2 like any other lens that, um, you know, if people are stacked or on different planes, then I stop down, but I, I do shoot it at two. Any single subject shot with it is usually at two. Yeah. And, I, and you know, I'm sure you've built this knowledge up over the years. And that's another one of those things that over the years you'll get that. But when you're shooting F2, your depth of field is pretty shallow, depending, mm -hmm. on, depending on your distance. Uh, so it's something you really got to pay attention to. And that's a good point, Meg, that if, if you're shooting a group of people that are not on the same plane, you may have to, uh, you know, back off that F2. Yeah. So this question, I'm not sure why someone would ask this question. Why should people invest in portraits of their children? So I'll tell you my thought, and then you can share yours. You know, I got photos of my, my child who, I take photos of myself, of course, but my child who just graduated from college, or not college, high school, I hired another photographer in the local area that I knew very good to take high school senior photos of him because I knew this person was one better than me and would get shots I couldn't get my kid to do. And I took them because he's never going to be a high school senior again. Yeah, I, I mean, I... My, my, Photographs of my children are my greatest pleasure ever. And I have my children this year being shot by different photographers because I think they're able to capture things that I cannot. So I think it's really important I, just, just over the years to have lots of images from different people, from different photographers. Yeah. You, you mentioned you have Nikki helping you now with the newborns. Um, how, how trouble, how much trouble was it to find someone that could fit your style that, you know, some of your photographers are so, uh, what do you call that? They want to own the whole process. Right. Well, Nikki has been my assistant for a long time okay. and after, and she always loves newborns. So we branched off into a small side business of doing newborns and she, she had been with me for so long that you know, we're sort of in sync. Yeah. So it works. Okay. And I, there's a few questions out there about like sharpening. You go over that kind of stuff in your workshops, right? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, okay. This person obviously wants to know this. <laughs> How do you eventually find your own style? How did you find your style over the years? Was it just continual playing around in Photoshop or, and let's, let's talk not just Photoshop, but also the, the photography side. Cause you know, each one is as important. How did you find your style? I mean, I think that if you go back, I, I was looking at a picture and <laughs> a picture from film actually in my hand the other day of my daughter when she was two. So we're going back almost 13 years and it is very similar to what I produce now. I really? mean, the processing obviously is a little bit different. It was film that makes it different, but the angles and the perspective is very much the same. 
So it's just a expansion, I think, on what has been always. Okay. Okay. And um, so with the uh, guys out in chat, uh, some of these questions we've answered before, so I don't want to keep going over the same ones. Meg, we're coming up on the hour, and Great. it's been a pleasure to talk to you. Thank tonight, you. and I hope this was a little bit easier than what you thought it would be. It um, was. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we so appreciate you coming out. I appreciate you having me. And and guys out in chat, don't forget to you know go to Meg's site and see these photos in their full glory. I will, I will find the Flickr page and put that in the links here too. We'll have the show, the edited show here later in the week. So be check, be sure to check that out. Um, and I. Th- I think that's it. Tim didn't make it tonight. I forgot to say that earlier. Tim's son is being inducted into the Honor Society. So Tim was not here tonight. Tim, Nick, um, Meg, Tim usually handles the chat for me and handles the show notes for me while I mm-hmm. do this. So a little distracted doing it all on my own tonight. So hopefully I didn't throw you off too much. No, you did great. <laughs> <laughs> um, so guys out in chat, I know you have questions that are still coming in. I would suggest, you know, I, you know, look at some of the, the workshops and some of those things. If they're not in your area, maybe you can't do them. But the the monthly edit that you're going to be doing, um, Meg, is a great opportunity for people to get involved and, and see that. I don't know how many spots you have available for that, whether that's going to sell out. But if there's still spots available, I would suggest that you look at that. Um, because some of these questions you're talking about editing, I think she's going to, somewhere over the course of the year, she'll go over that. Right. Okay, good. All right, that's the end of the show for this week. Uh, Until next week, keep it raw. Good night, everybody. Great. Thank you.